Welcome to the Orange Hammer Podcast. My name is Corbett Storick. I've been a licensed general contractor for eight plus years, specializing in new construction, renovation, furniture building. I'm the son of an architect and an interior designer, and I've been surrounded in this industry since birth, watching all aspects from concept, design, build, punch list, and of course, all the problems that come up in between. In my time in Durham, North Carolina, I've noticed a significant gap in knowledge between homeowners who need work and the people who do the work. On this podcast, I hope to break down the process of homeownership from the perspective of both the homeowner and the contractor in an effort to help raise the knowledge of homeowners about their homes and the construction slash renovation process. I hope you enjoy. If you're enjoying the Orange Hammer podcast, or if you have a topic that you want covered, or have recently done a project, please contact the Orange Hammer podcast. The Orange Hammer podcast is on Instagram and Facebook. Please like and subscribe, share on whatever platform you're enjoying your podcast on. Also check out our YouTube channel, The Orange Hammer. The Orange Hammer podcast is proud to be brought to you by CRS Contracting LLC for all your construction and handyman needs, new buildings to renovations, furniture building, EV charger install, or even a TV mounted, you can call me, Corbett Storick. It'd be my pleasure to help you. You can find me on Instagram at CRS Contracting, WSDG, the Walter Storick Design Group, specialists in architectural and acoustical consulting. Check out WSDG.com. And Taylor Bragg, for all your artistic needs in all mediums, you can find her on Instagram at Bragg underscore about underscore art. That's Bragg, B-R-G-G, with two Gs. She's the fantastic artist behind the Orange Hammer logo, and she did my fantastic table painting of my podcasting table. Welcome, everybody, to the Orange Hammer Podcast. I am here with Rachel Z. We're going to omit the last name, keeping it very strange for some <laughs> reason. Um, a local realtor. Yes. And I th- believe that I just stumbled upon your posts on Facebook mm-hmm. and was like, hey, how's it going? I see you dominating the Mebbin area. Mm-hmm. And that's not really an area that I've gone to except work-wise, except to put in one Tesla charger. So I was like, hey, how's it going? And you were like, hey, how's it going? And here we are doing the podcast. Yes. So it's awesome. Very excited to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Corbett. I love that you're here. So First, I want to know, how did you stumble upon the world of being a real estate agent? I always say I gumped into it. Okay. Uh, I'd always been in sales, had always sold uh, everything, retail, uh, worked in the service industry, was a bartender, uh, server in restaurants. And I think those same skills transition really easily into real estate. Just always, people person. Yeah, to I the was max. always working with the people, and always, and also had a genuine interest in the people I was I was speaking to. Like I walked in ten minutes ago and was like, "Oh, I love your orange house. Why do you like orange?" And that's uh, very genuine, and we'll need to know about people. And uh, anyone from the person I sold makeup to at Merle Norman Cosmetics at Northgate Mall in the 90s to um, the people I was mixing a drink for at Hartman's Restaurant, which unfortunately does not exist anymore. Back on Dory, Northgate Mall won't exist very long, so it's okay. You're right about that. (laughs) You're right. Um, I keep saying, hey, if Northgate Mall can hang in there, I can too. I'm having a day. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) but You're going to need a new comparison (laughs) soon because it's going. Oh, you're right. You're right. I heard it was already approved to be. Yeah demoed and they're going to turn it into some huge like mixed use yeah you know kind of like a retail bottom level with like you know condo half mm-hmm. mil to pro- well now they'll probably be million dollar condos above based yeah. on just like what durham has done yeah yeah, yeah. uh so how long ago did you transition into being a real when did you get your license um in early 2000s and okay. i worked for a builder in the raleigh Cary area uh, okay. So that was a great training ground. So you were there like in-house y- yes. realtor? Yep. I, okay. I, so when you go into those new neighborhoods, Corbett, with names like Hidden Ridge and Willow Springs and um, Pleasant Valley, the uh, person that is in the model home that is overly excited to see you, that is me. Or that okay. was me. Okay. And uh, people would pop in and uh, we'd pick a floor plan and, and we'd uh, 
start to uh, build their house or the, the builder would start to because build their house. Because that, that builder or the builder's investment partners or both or mm-hmm. some combination have bought hundreds of acres of forest. This is they true. Yep. deforested it and turned it into a, a dirt patch mm-hmm. and then they chop it up into, you know, like that like that show Weeds with the intro, little boxes on the hilltop that all look just the same. Yeah. Like not throwing shade. Everybody's no. got to oh, make no. money. I'm just saying like that's that's why you're there to be like, okay, the infrastructure has been put in. We've yeah. got the roads. If you drive down all these lots, there's the first plumbing be- has already stubbed mm-hmm. up. And here's one or possibly two options that we do. Yeah. And then other than like finishes, you basically get this house or one of like three or five. Like I know if you look that road when you leave out of here, there's four on the right and one on the left. Mm-hmm. And those five were built by Durham Building Company. Yes. And those are like the five styles that they do. Period, cut and dry, end of store. You can change paint. You can change siding type. You can change interior finishes. But like this is it. You're exactly right. And yeah. like – I got no shade on Durham Building Company. They're yeah. fantastic. But um, it it's just like that. It's like their kind of showcase or showroom, for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's ex- you're exactly right. And that was like exactly the scenario. And it, it's funny because I'm not necessarily a fan of the come in and do the clear cut and the deforestation. It definitely fits the need for housing. Oh, and, 100%. And, and back yeah. then, of course, so many people were moving to Raleigh and Cary. Growing up in Durham, actually right around the corner from where we are now, um, we used to joke, oh, we're going out to Cary and Apex. We're going out to the Sticks. Oh, so you're from Durham? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's even cooler. I, I grew up right on Gear Street, right around the corner. Oh, pff, from that's you. awesome. In fact, I used to ride my bike through those woods right so there. Like, so the paths are still there. You yeah. could probably confirm, because my buddy Jeremy, he's mm-hmm. from Durham. He was like, You know, before the new stadium, back when games were at the old stadium, he was like, you drove there, you watched a game, you left. You You mean the Durham Bulls? Yeah, you did not hang out. It was not safe other than games. Oh, yeah. Like, you just took off. What's Jeremy's last name? Can I ask on the... Yeah, Yeah. uh, he's been on the podcast. Jeremy Strawlings. Stallings. Okay, I know a lot of Stallings, so I'm sure I know He does have a brother... And who's yeah. still in the area, and his parents, I think, actually are now in Mebbin. Oh, okay, of course. They were in Durham, so Everyone maybe you sold Durham them their house. Is, I probably did. Oh, yeah. yeah, the Stallings, I need to call them. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... <laughs> you better send them a <laughs> potted plant immediately. Yeah. So uh, you yeah. have seen literally firsthand by living. Did you, well, let me ask, did yeah. you move away for a stretch and come back, or are you a not, Durhamite? Not really. I've traveled around quite a bit, but uh, otherwise I've always been in North Carolina. So North Carolina, Chapel Hill, or rather Durham, Chapel Hill, different areas of Durham, uh, Robeson County, which is an adventure in itself. And then um, I moved to Alamance County. Because, okay, where is yeah. Alamance? That sounds familiar. Mebbin. So it's okay, the Mebbin, Burlington. Mebbin spans both Orange County and Alamance County. So it's Burlington, um, Mebbin, like past the outlets when you're headed west. Everything is for a little while is Alamance County. But it's a great place. Does that get place. confusing with... Yeah building permits because one city is in two counties yeah well not confusing um but Just, there are different things different ways we have to do things yeah because yeah. i i know that like or please correct me if i'm wrong but i believe orange county or sorry chapel hill is in orange county you're correct yeah. but chapel hill has its own town building of chapel permit. hill you're exactly right yeah yeah because i had to do one and i went there and after like quite a long time they basically were like you're in the wrong place Oh, like you need yeah. to go to Hillsboro. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was like, "What?" Yeah, we were like, "Yeah, that's where you get this, all the permits. That's stuff where this and, is yeah. done. Like, this yeah. is only the office for like inner city Chapel Hill." Yeah, there's town of Chapel Hill, then there's Orange County. You have to go to Hillsboro. Yeah, but I, but like the address of the client was Chapel Hill, yeah. so I was like, you "I'm made, going to Chapel I, Hill." If I were not from here, Corbett, I would probably make the that same assumption. Well, yeah. you know, excuse me <laughs> for thinking that the address would then you'd go to the yeah yeah, yeah and like. Uh, I just found out that Nightdale, they're like, we don't even care. Just do it through Wake County, yeah. like do it for a building permit, mm-hmm. which I just submitted for. Yeah. So, um, so it's like, okay, I mean, you know, I, I, I try to stick to Durham. They have an annoying system, but I've learned it and I know it really yes. well. So it's yeah. like, okay. And at least when I'm missing a piece of paper, I get like an email from a real human mm-hmm. that's like, hey, if you could send me this piece of paper within 10 days, we can just keep this rolling. And I'm yeah. like, that's 
You'll have it in a day. That's exactly <laughs> what I needed to hear. Instead of just an automated computer, like, fail. <laughs> but you don't deal so much with the permitting side now in the real estate world. I do. I actually do a little bit of everything because okay. I have that building okay. experience. And I also grew up with a father who um, actually worked for the tobacco industry, but was a plumber by trade and a pipe fitter by trade. Okay, and okay. so I always say I have... Um, PTSD from being under a house and being yelled at for not holding the flashlight correctly. Um, but uh, I will delve into any project. So I work with builders sometimes, and my assistant and I may have to research something or may have to get something. I would say typically it's retroactively permitting things. I may sell a wow, house that okay. has unpermitted areas, which I'm sure you come across that all the time. Um, or, or maybe. Uh, but oh, I mean, honestly, not yeah. really. Not, yeah. Yeah. Well, it may have an unpermitted area, for example, and um, we want to be able to count that square footage because that adds more value. So then we'll say, okay, let's get a GC in here. Let's see what actually needs to be done. What can we do to um, bring this up to code? And let's get Orange County or Durham County or, or whatever municipality out here and uh, allow us to count this square footage because now we've done things, whether it's with the plumbing or the electrical to allow uh, this area to now be permitted. So right. it's a lot of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's very interesting to know that that can be done. Because yeah. I, I haven't really gotten a lot of calls where work has been done without a permit and now they want me to make it. Yeah. It just hasn't, it just hasn't yeah. happened. And for, and when, you know, when I get the call to do the job without the permit, I usually just go, this needs to be permitted yeah. because, or like, you know, or at least we got to do it correctly. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I just haven't really come across that, but that's interesting. So you bring in a GC who more or less like just verifies that things have been done or you then have to like uh, do additional things. You got to like cut a hole in the wall and show insulation or yeah, all the above. Yeah. All of the above. Yeah. Okay. Nine times out of 10, you can see that whoever did the work, was trying to do their best, but it may have been done. Like a homeowner who was just it's trying always a to, DIY it's always type a DIY. of deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. My, um, <laughs> I got a buddy, we'll leave the names out, <laughs> but I got a buddy who like, he's not, you know, he, he knows what to do. He's yeah. not the guy I'm going to reference, but like he was, you know, making some, you know, roof structure thing for, I don't know, some outdoor kitchen pergola thing or whatever and like he had a buddy of his or maybe it was a neighbor i can't remember helping him right so that like neighbor buddy or whatever like saw it and was like all right i can do this right and then like started doing it to the best of his knowledge like what he could do at his and it's just so wrong like sagging already oh, like no. not correct stud spacing like joist hangers using correctly like all no double beam just like all this stuff and it was like it's like my my friend who who did it correctly is like i'm seeing it happen but i'm just i gotta i told him i'd help if he wanted but he's <sighs> trying to he's trying to do it himself and i was just like i'm like you well could have hired me <laughs> also oh, would have no. been the easier solution yeah. <laughs> would have just built it correctly but you know some yeah. people got to try once and then they'll learn <laughs> and then yeah. they'll learn uh. i was like <laughs> as, hey the, the part where i felt bad was when my friend was like it's all fun and games until it falls over and hits his truck yeah yeah i was like yeah then it's not funny or hits someone that's uh, come over to enjoy the pergola even well, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I well, didn't he, think he can't that. look at it as a fail. It was a lesson. It was a lesson. Yes. There you go. Yeah. That's okay. Right. So you are, you're an above average realtor when it comes to home construction knowledge then. I th that's what my mom says. So well, I that's a say. good yes, thing. Yeah. Because yeah, I think that that <laughs> yeah, is I, a, you're right. yeah. I think that's a huge asset. 100% especially in the way the market was like a year and a half ago, two years ago when everything was go, go, go. And we only had a really short time to look at a house and then make an offer. So having that experience did allow me to get in the crawl space. I have car hearts in my car right now. I will, I will get in a crawl space. I will climb in the attic because if we only have a certain window where we have to make the most informed decision possible, that experience is very helpful to say, hey, this is kind of a red flag, or hey, I know this house is old, but it's really structurally sound. Don't be afraid to move forward with it. Yeah, yeah. I shout out to my uh, friend Angie Bagley, who's been on this podcast. Like, she has her 
brother's like military flight jumpsuit nice. that she will use to like crawl into crawl spaces. And I remember one time, she's the first time she met me. Jeremy is actually the connection. Nice. And Jeremy Jer- Stalling. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so yeah. Jeremy and I are meeting at her ha- rental or whatever to look at the crawl space. Mm-hmm. And I like just got my new Tesla. And I'm, of course, like rolling in it. And, it, you know, it's got white seats. Mm-hmm. And they see me roll up, and they're just they're looking at each other like, "This is your friend." This is we told him we're going in a crawl space, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't wait to get out there, pop that frunk, and <laughs> and, there, and waiting there is like my my folded up mechanics mm-hmm. onesie and my boots, my my headband, flashlight, my like real heavy duty gloves, and I'm just like I suit up in three seconds, and I'm like, "Where's this crawl space at? Let's go! <laughs> Come on! You I'd said like, you had a leak. I like this guy. Yeah, let's nice. go. He's yeah, prepared. don't don't be fooled. You said crawl." space let's go oh yeah. yeah i'll show up in dresses and heels now if i'm gonna go show land obviously i'm wearing like muck boots or something yeah. but but if we're showing a house like in trinity park in durham actually we did this recently and uh i got out in a dress and heels i was like hold on and i like put my whole outfit it's on i was like all right let's do this are you ready and they were kind of like we okay yeah we are we're excited what's happening <laughs> And then afterwards, Corbett, they were like, we like you. We want you to work with us. I was like, yes, yeah. I mean, trust me, yeah. I'm not throwing smoke on Stacy, my realtor, but she does not go into crawl spaces. But that's okay because she probably has resources. A hundred percent. That's yes. why there's Stacey, no smoke. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we're, 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 we're graced with Willie Bear, the studio dog. Hello, He's Willie. coming to say hello. He's such a baby. Hey, yes, buddy. All right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there is no real substitution for getting that like actual visual with your own eyes because you can get amazing pictures and a detailed inspection report but sometimes you really just got to see what's going on and a lot of times from at least from my experience the inspection report always makes it seem a lot worse than it is yeah and at least in the like it, at least in the context of like crawl spaces and rotted stuff. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. There's times it's very accurate. I'm not saying oh, this, certainly. I'm not putting like a warning against like, don't listen to your inspection report. That's yes, not what's yeah. happening. I'm just saying like a lot of times the inspector is like, I saw this. Yes. I recommend get like this. And mm-hmm. the recommendation is like so extreme. And then sometimes you can go under there and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we just chip away a little bit of rot and sister in two not rotted ones on each side, yes. we don't need to do this whole massive thing. Like, yes. he's right. It's It sucks, but this is not, we don't need to do that entire repair. And that's why getting your eyes on there sometimes can just be like, it's needed. You're exactly right. Yeah. Or having that building experience with a lot of the new construction, especially what I sold like in the Cary, Holly Springs area, a lot of those little turnkey homes were on slabs. And mm, so now that's yeah. reselling slabs, um, they'll put um, like a foam around the slab. And uh, when anybody uses a weed whacker core, but they'll, they'll hit the foam and then you can see the foam. So I had an inspector once uh, write this long report and I was selling the house and he was representing the buyer, the buyer agent hired him and super nice guy, but wrote this long uh, report about how uh, the foundation has these problems and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, this is foam. This is just foam. Like it's not, it's a slab, it's foam. It's okay. We'll, we'll put more foam on. And then it, that just really made everyone feel, okay, it's just foam. It's not a big deal. It's not something that's going to impede upon the structural integrity. We'll yeah. just put more foam there. Yeah, yeah. slab. I mean, I am ironically planning a slab on grade home, mm-hmm. but it's not. I feel like I'm such an idiot. It's not the move in North Carolina. Like the the clay is real, and it affects slabs aggressively, and really makes homes move. And homes move, but slabs don't. <laughs> well, yeah. as long as you're able to, and you know this, uh, uh, grade the right way, make sure all your plumbing is accessible. No, you can yeah. do, you know, you obviously do all the things you can. Absolutely. I'm just saying yeah. it is, it is definitely, you know, when that slab cracks, it is, it is usually, you know, it's time to get a jackhammer and it's very frustrating and it's very expensive and it's just. It, that certainly yeah. can happen. Yeah, the worst case sure. scenario. Hopefully that, knock on yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing everything I can think of. Yeah. Uh, where's your new house going to be? 
Uh, it's going to be up in Hurdle Mills. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Pretty area. Uh, near up near up to where Jeremy's at. Okay. Yeah. Um, Very cool. I got 11, 11 plus acres out there. Nice. Um, and I've run power and dug a well, and I'm just like in the design phase of the of the house. Nice. And once I'm done designing, I got to get, um, I got to find some creative financier people mm-hmm. and figure out how to do it. Uh, yeah, I... It sounds strange to me because I know what I'm capable of and I do it for a living. Mm-hmm. But the more people I talk to in the finance world, it's definitely a huge negative to be your own contractor to build your own home when it comes to financing. Because mm-hmm. that's a huge red flag for like potential fraud. Fraud. Yeah. And I'm just like, shit, man, I just want to build my forever home and I, d- <laughs> I don't need a contract. I know how to do this. Like, yeah. wait a minute. So, so, so like everybody keeps saying like, you know, we, we'll just have to get creative when the time comes when you're like actually ready to pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, I have suggestions for it. Well, maybe you can um, have someone super like another general contractor. You can work, work under their license mm, and they interesting. can supervise you. So, th- so that may be an option. Yeah. I never yeah. even thought of that. Yeah, yeah. That might actually be a really simple move. A lot of people do that core, but especially folks that like, if, for example, if my dad were to build a house right now, he's really knowledgeable. He could do it, but he's not a licensed general contractor. So more than likely we'd find somebody that he could build the house under. I wouldn't advise doing it to sell. But uh, for your own house, absolutely. Yeah. And that may yeah, be a better yeah. option for you. Yeah, that might be a move. Yeah. I never even thought about that. But, yeah, yeah that might be exactly what I do yeah. um, because that would, it would be the easiest job that general contractor got. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. be like, I got to pay you to per- pull a permit, man, <laughs> and just, you know, dub- maybe be there for the framing inspection. Yeah. But, like, other than that, <laughs> like, I don't really need you to do much, man. Yeah. I, I got no this. footers will be dug because yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. There will, it's true. Yeah, actually, there probably will still there be will footers. be some stuff. Yeah, yeah, there'll yeah. be some. All the whole outside will still have some footers, and I think there's one just whole load bearing wall going down the middle. But nice. yeah, is it going to be one level? Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. I'm building. I'm building a forever home that I can age in place in, and Smart. I already have a foot problem. So oh. I was like, I was like, I'm definitely doing no steps, no. Yeah. Like, just all the things that I can think of to remove from that uh, equation. I'm even, tr- I even, you know, I now I'm remembering I did reach out and didn't hear back. I need to follow up with uh, somebody who does, um, who, like, specializes in age in place uh, design. Yes. And I want, really want to talk to them about my home, but I really want to get them on the podcast. Yes. Because it's definitely something that people don't think about at all. Yeah. And when more people, experience. more and more people are starting to think about it. Well, I'm relieved but, to hear that. Yeah. But in my experience, uh, even people who are older than me will be like designing their, you know, addition or their bathroom or whatever with no regard to like, mm-hmm. well, this will be really difficult one day. You're right. And it's hard to answer or ask those questions as an agent. Sometimes I'll have someone in their. 60s perhaps that I can tell does not have the mobility that maybe a younger person would have and they're they say oh, I love this house let's make an offer on it and the master bedroom's upstairs and you you want to give them good advice but you don't want to deter them for what they really want to do but I will often say hey what are some backup plans if if someone needs to have a one level home or or easier access to get in in and out of the home can we make this a downstairs bedroom? Oh, Rachel, we don't need that right now. I know, and I'd be happy to sell this house again in 10 years, but it may be something you want to think about, especially when you're building. So you're right. A lot of people, not as many people um, are thinking about that, and they should be. Yeah, yeah, I just think, well, you know, you mentioned a big point of like, you know, in that in this hypothetical instance, mm-hmm. they're not going to be there in 10 years. They don't care. Yeah. And and don't don't care in 10 years. Like sure, but if you are planning your forever home or you're at a certain age where it does not take a lot to go from, you know, like you know, I I'm 32. Even at 32, like certain activities take a couple of days to recover, whereas mm-hmm. when I was 18, there was zero recovery. So, like, you know, at 60, I might not even be be able to do those activities or they will take even longer to recover and I will need whatever help is needed. So, at a certain age, it does become, you know, like, okay, yeah, it's designed well and whatever, but living here day to day, 
do I really want to be moving up and down the steps 18 times a day to go from my office upstairs to the kitchen downstairs to the office upstairs to the bathroom downstairs to the boom to the boom to the what to the whatever it is and you know even things like um I don't want to be in a wheelchair but I want all my doorways to be wheelchair with because it could happen I can't control certain things oh 100 percent or what if you have a parent that needs to come live with you right or 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 a spouse that um, you know we get we're, we're together and everything's happy and healthy and they get sick 20 years later. God I'm forbid. still going to be with yeah. them and want to make sure that I don't have to cut open the doorways. Yeah. So the, the forward thinking of like, okay, what does it cost to take all the interior doors and make them 36 inch wide doors? Yeah. When you're designing a house, it costs zero. You're extra. exactly right. It costs yeah. absolutely nothing yes. to just go, let's make all the doors 36 inches. And it's also great for resale. You would be surprised. Huge for resale. How many people tell me that's one of their prerequisites as far as what they need when we are searching for a house. We would prefer these ADA compliant features. Yeah. Awesome. And And for me, I'm doing extra height doors. Yes. uh, Because all doors are six foot eight. Yeah. But I'm doing seven foot doors because we accidentally ordered seven foot doors for a house kept them in a garage and used them on the next house because yeah. by the time they got there, it was too hard to reframe. Yeah, yeah. And so we just kept them where we used them, cost nothing. But we walked through the house where we put in the seven foot doors and we were all like, this should just be the norm. This is way yes. better. How much more were these? And I was like, they weren't more. They're like, the, it was like four or $5 extra. Like when you're getting custom doors from the door company, no matter what, even if it's a not custom style, Mm -hmm. they're still considered a custom door. Yeah. And to go from 32 to 36 and from six foot eight to seven foot is such a a non-noticeable amount of money. We're talking like a 260 something to a 280 something dollars. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. I mean, for me, I'm six foot five. Mm -hmm. I actually notice that shit. Yes. You know, I'm six foot six in hiking boots, you know, so six foot eight is actually kind of tight walking through a door. Uh, So the seven foot for me, super needed for everyone else. Like, I'm not telling you what to do. This is anecdotal stuff. This is not you should do this. You can say your opinion on resale value. And I would agree with you that 36 inch doors and seven foot uh, wide and seven foot tall doors are absolutely the way to go. As a tall person, too, I'll sometimes, if I go to sell a house, I'll pop into someone's home, and I may come out of their restroom and say, you have uh, heightened toilets and high counters. That's terrific. And things like that, little things, people notice. Other people notice that when they're looking at homes. The high countertops is a thing that I am seeing it the discussion more and more mm-hmm. i'm not seeing it in person yeah. yet as much i see it in a lot of bathrooms the okay. taller countertops because think about when you're here and you lean over to wash your face you're probably leaning over quite a ways yeah. well you've you've uh, renovated a lot of this but... so ironically i kept all the cabinetry okay. the vanities oh, were smart. the They're only good shape. thing that were yeah they yeah. were barely untouched at all and uh they were the actually the only things i kept in both bathroom yeah. renovations and i could show you the, the renovations and the before and after pictures when we're done with this but i did get some height because the vanities had those like for mica mm-hmm. with the sink that slopes down yeah type yeah. of situation and now i have pedestal sinks above stone tops nice so just by adjusting the arrangement I went from like a three to five inch deficit to like six inches higher Mm -hmm. but if in my new home I will be ordering all uh (laughs) I will either be I will either be ordering the kitchen cabinets and vanities at an extra height from the manufacturer Mm -hmm. or depending on the cost because I just haven't looked into it yet I will just be framing a, a platform out of two by four with a half inch piece of plywood on top of it as a platform for everything. Yeah. And just put all the cabinets and then just trim it out with some thicker baseboard yeah. because I actually am super tall. Yeah. And it's not like just to say I did it like this is 50 years of back. I'm saving. <laughs> I do a lot of cooking. So like yeah. having the, the kitchen island at a nice height. Be comfortable. It would be more yeah. comfortable. This is yeah. your forever home. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
and um, it would be I I definitely want to um, like find a showroom or even someone's real house where they've done it and just like get a feel. Yes, yeah. Chop an onion. <laughs> just like see see how it actually feels and see if it's that much noticeable or if yeah. it's just kind of like one of those things that people are doing. Signature flooring uh has that. You should go check it out. They have a, I don't know if I'm allowed to say a, that here. Yeah. You're allowed to say anything. They're in Mabin. Yeah. They go to Orange County. Okay. Signature Flooring has a gorgeous showroom. It's on Mebane Oaks Road. So if you go to Mebane and you take the exit, shout out to Signature Flooring. Uh, <laughs> if you take the exit to go to the uh, outlets, you you uh, go the opposite way. Okay. And they're like right there off the exit in Mebane. They go to Durham. They go to Raleigh. They go to Orange County. They go to Hurdle Mills quite a bit. Sweet. And they have tile kitchens, but they're awesome to work with. And I like also that they're just creative. You'll say, hey, we really we really need this. I have an idea. So they can they can help with that, but they have the, that showroom with the different heights. Okay, so, so I, I there's a fantastic showroom in Durham, uh, flooring by design. Yes, but over on the other side of town, on um, off of Roxborough, yeah. where Honey's used to be in that they, vicinity. They are fantastic. I just don't know if they have a, a height one. That's the only. They thing. can find one for you. They're awesome. Oh, I they're yeah. fantastic. They can say we yeah. will find a house for you to go to. Yeah, in yeah. fact, I have. Um, God, I always forget if it's Carolyn or Caroline. I think it's Carolyn uh, Hicks who mm-hmm. works there who's going to come on to an episode. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Because she's yeah. a very talented interior designer. We've already linked up to do one job for one of her clients. Nice. We met at a B&I, and I was just like. Very cool. She gave me a tour of the showroom, and I was like, yeah, this is great. And I, I kept after her a little bit. I was like, <laughs> come on the podcast. She was like, I don't know if I have anything interesting. Oh, yes, she does. I was literally yeah. like. It's a construction and a homeownership. You literally have the juice I want. <laughs> You've got it. Like, yeah. I don't, just talk about what you do for work, and it's the juice. <laughs> and then, of course, like, she's just being humble. She sent me a picture of, like, her home office that she designed and built, and it's, like, this super modern wood, like, structure in a home already with built-in lights and i was like that's incredible uh, literally a whole episode right there yes i, was like, I want to do a whole episode yeah. just about her office or i'm gonna go. listen to that when you do that i got we got a new subscriber <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm number six <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> there's only five subscribers so no. <laughs> so um what was the Okay, so a couple clarity questions. Mm-hmm. I'm going to assume, based on our conversation, you're a residential. Yes, Okay. primarily. Yes. Primarily I've done other things, land commercial, but primarily residential. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and primarily out in the Mebbin world. Yes. I, well, okay. Alamance and Orange primarily, and uh, being from Durham, having worked in Cary and Raleigh for so long, um, I just closed a deal in Cary. I um, work in Durham all the time because I grew up here. I have a listing in on Gregson Street in Trinity Park right now that's under contract. Um, so uh, primarily Durham, Alamance, Orange, and some Wake County. Okay. Yeah. So you really are all over all the All over the triangle yeah. and the triad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know about the areas, not just like, oh, I'll drive out there. Like, I actually know about the Well, you've been living in the whole triangle, yeah. bouncing around your yeah. whole life. So yeah. you actually can say that with mm-hmm. some with some truth. Yeah. Um, primarily uh, buyers or sellers? Uh, primarily sellers. Um, but I work with a lot of buyers as well. I have buyer agents that work with me um but primarily selling i love marketing i love selling i love selling homes okay so are you are a lot of those people repeat like they're selling a home they're buying something else with a different agent and then they're coming back to you when they want to move and they're oh always um typically though they don't buy something with a different agent um they will work with one of my agents on my team Oh, okay, you um, have a team. Yes, yes. Okay. So I have a buyer agent that works for me. Okay. Um, and I, I primarily do that, Corbett, so there's not a conflict of interest because I may list a house and then there they might be in a house that uh, we found them five years ago and then this happened recently and then they're like, Rachel, I really like the house you just listed in Hillsboro. It looks great. We'd like to see that. Um, and I don't want to cross any lines and uh, have a conflict of interest. So I'll say, hey... I thought that um, was just illegal. You're saying it like you could do it. In North Carolina, dual agency where you represent both a buyer and a seller is legal. I think in California, New York, there are other rules. But um, in North Carolina, dual agency, 
is legal. Some people do it really beautifully. I just don't want any issues. So I'm, oh, okay. I'm just like, hey, I just represent the seller. Um, but, but yeah, I work with buyers and sellers. But I like working with sellers. Um, I um, like to find out. I, I try to be a good listener, and I want to find out what they want to accomplish and then put a plan together. I sound like the guy from the A-team, but I, I want to put, put a plan together. <laughs> To, uh... I, I don't think I don't think I don't think it sounds any like weird, but I'm just curious, yeah. like for a for working with somebody that it, at least in my head, if I if I'm a realtor and I'm mm-hmm. working with you as a and you're a buyer. Yeah, there is a lot more going into what you're trying to buy. Oh, certainly. But well, when you yeah. say I'm trying to make a plan for a seller forgive me if I'm wrong, yeah. is the plan not sell it for as much as humanly possible? That is the plan. Right. So, But, but there could be different things that, that play into that. Um, one example may be um, they really need to move because there is a health problem. They need a one-level home. Um, they can't move until they sell their house. They need the cash from that sale. Um, we need to find a new house for them. Let's say they want to move to Hurdle Mills from Durham. Now we need to find a buyer for this house. We need to put that house on the market, but we need to implement a timeline to start looking for the new house. And we need to set the expectation with the new buyer that comes along, hey, we can't have you move in until we've moved out. So there are a lot of different things. And so a there's lot of, just potential for different circumstances. Oh, certainly. The there's always different still... scenar- scenarios. Okay. But the plan is always sell for uh, okay. the most amount and uh, as pain, painlessly as possible. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So there's lots of different things that may go into that. Uh, if it's an older house, we may pre-inspect the older house to – to find out if there's any issues that we need to go ahead and take care of. Before uh, you even list it. Oh, yeah, before yeah. we even list it. Um, so there are different things that go into each scenario. Yeah. I, I, My grandfather would get Which home one? inspections, that the one, one behind yeah. you, would get home inspections, I don't want to say yearly, but definitely like every couple of years. And not, he never was ever dreaming of selling. He would just yeah. get a home inspection and then fix the stuff. Oh, absolutely, because there are so many things that we can't see. I live, um, or one a house that I live in in Mebane, in downtown Mebane, one of my homes, um, I had some work done by an HVAC guy that I'm friends with. Shout out to Chris Tarrant. And uh, he came back up from the uh, tall crawl space and said, hey, you've got some rotten wood right here by your back door because water had been getting in because the seal was jacked and uh, I didn't know that it didn't feel any different stepping on the tile but that's a great reason to get a home inspection every couple years because you may not know what's uh what you you don't know what you can't see yeah Yeah. I've I've outlined on an entire uh, we took a whole episode shout out Chris Hawks and Stacy Sloan from Weston Woodall I love Stacy Sloan I'm friends with Stacy that's my family realtor yeah Yeah, that's our agent awesome she is phenomenal and Chris their whole their whole team yeah you know I've always said like if they don't know it they'll just find it shout out to Stacy Sloan yeah (laughs) Stacy's great and and Weston Woodall yeah um but the three of us for like two hours, we just did an entire um, top to bottom, inside and out, how to look at your home, see if something's what to look for. Yeah. Like this is kind of your yearly maintenance. And you could listen to that episode and do everything we said, or you could just hire a home inspector and mm-hmm. then hire somebody like me or the equivalent of wherever you are in yeah. where, wherever part of the country. I, I am not saying that you have to be the one who has a garage full of tools that maintains your own home. But ignorance is not a good look. No, it's not. So at least be proactive about having some regular maintenance done. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, um, damn, I am forgetting who it was, but somebody on here told me they had like their air conditioners like 25 years old. And he was like, I get it serviced twice a year. When the summer comes, when the winter comes. And I was like, that's overkill, but hence 25 25 years years. of an air conditioner. Hey, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, most of them last 10. So, if you want to get 25 years of life, that's what you have to do. So, yeah, it's not free to get that stuff serviced, Mm -hmm. but you know what else isn't free? A whole new air conditioner. Absolutely. Yeah. And you you can't just put your head in the sand. It may be a little painful to have to pay for something, but it's gonna get a lot worse. Yeah, and if that stuff's and if that stuff's too painful, yeah. I hate to be blunt about it. Yeah. Homeownership's not for you. Yeah. Because homeownership is very much a continual Mm -hmm. maintenance. 
Um, my dad had a uh, maintenance student. No. He was like H. He just did everything. Yeah. His name was literally Rusty. He started as our plumber, then just became our everything. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, something that was like a year old with a huge warranty broke. Mm -hmm. And Rusty was like, I, you know, and he fixed it. And yeah. my dad was like, what's up, man? Like uh, one year? And Rusty just looked at him and went, John, everything works till it doesn't. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't put it in, but I can damn sure fix it. Yeah. But it broke. And you want it to, you know, I, you know. As my dad would say, the cat ate the pencil. Yeah, which I never understood that one, but oh, I, I think it, I think it was yeah. like his version of the dog ate my homework. It's huh. like the cat ate yeah. the pencil, but I don't know. My my dad would say a bunch of hilarious stuff like, um, "Can't shower with a grouper," like a fish. Yeah, it grouper? would just flop. Okay. And then and then when we looked at him like he was crazy, he yeah. said, "What? It would just flop all over you." This is true. I haven't tried it, but I may now. I, yeah. I don't recommend yeah. trying this. Probably not. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. I don't believe no. you that you're going to try this. It, it would yeah. uh, cause a lot of uh, weird questions. To I was going to say, like, kid's husband would be like, what are you doing? Yes. Get that out of the house. <laughs> why, why is that not dinner? <laughs> I just want to try something first. This is a Southern colloquialism. Let's just see if this works. Okay, so yeah. you're a Southern born and raised. Can you confirm? Because I think I already know the answer. But is this um, a question about cheer wine? Because I can't no, answer. No, it's okay, not yeah. a question about okay. cheer wine. But I'm a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Who's not? There, I guess there yeah. are people. Um, Don't want to know them. So two questions. Mm -hmm. How big of a deal was it when Sherry Berry retired? Oh, it's just not the same when it's you pop it. Same. Yeah, it's just not. I, and I, I, I cannot tell you how many times I've popped into an elevator, and especially if it's in North Carolina, and uh, we're just going up, and we just kind of go, hmm, it's not the same. Who is this guy with the yeah. tie? This, this isn't she. Affects me zero yeah. percent. Didn't even know who she was. Yeah, uh, very much. Like I don't know who. I, the fact that you guys care so uh, much it just about. Makes, it makes me feel like my world yeah. is changing. I personally think you got you guys. I personally <laughs> think it's only a thing because of her name rhymes. That, but also we're just so used to have, I mean, in college, I was in college in 2002, 2001, and to see, uh, she was there in college, like, I'm pretty sure. Right, but I'm yeah. saying, like, if her name was, like, Catherine McGovstein, that just meant nothing. We'd be like, we missed I don't the McGov. Know if, I don't I know if McGov, you would. We're team McGov. Like, I would be like, I, McGov takes me above. I like, love how you're doubling yeah, up on the fact that it would matter I'm so like, it much. It would matter. Okay, so the next one I've got is um, Bless Your Heart. I don't say that. It sounds stupid. But it's not a compliment. Um, I think. It is very much like, oh, you're an idiot. Well, I think it is now, but I think. For, for so long, people just heard the accent and thought, oh, God, this person's an idiot, when they would hear a Southern accent. and um, But it's a Southern to Southern thing that I'm talking about. Oh, this is not. Southerners say to other Southerners? Just at all, yeah. Just in general. Um, yeah, I think you're right. It is meant, meant as a slight. I don't think it always was. It was more like, oh, you're so sweet. Bless your heart. You're just too cute. But now you hear it and you're like, what did she mean by that? <laughs> What are you talking about? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel like I've only really seen it. Like, I'll just be watching it go on from mm -hmm. afar, and I'm yeah. like, that was, she called you dumb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The new one is, I'll pray for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the new one. That's, You're just like, yeah, oh, yeah. God, If someone that says harsh. they're going to pray for you, that means <laughs> you screwed up. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, God, that stung. <laughs> um, I want to circle back to, yes. you were talking about um, all of the new construction that you were doing the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and I noticed not any physical uh that I saw with my own eyes, but the internet was exploding with new construction and it was just a joke. The stuff that was skipped, the corners that were skipped, um, tons of like home inspectors doing the inspectors and just being like, what were they thinking? Mm -hmm. And I know the reasons it was just, there was a massive shortage of housing, a massive on run, on run, in run, of people moving here, whatever you would, whatever the term is, uh, apologies if I misspoke, and people were just we needed built as fast as possible, and yeah, like don't get me wrong, if I hired you to build me a house, I want it sooner than later, mm -hmm. but 
I definitely don't want it sooner than later at the at the risk of corners being cut mm-hmm. and vents not being hooked up correctly and wires not being run correctly and framing not being done correctly or missing crucial metal brackets. Like, did you encounter any of that kind of I, uh, I have, world? I have not. Um I have not in the triangle or the triad area with the builders in those areas. Um, I think a lot of the negative I heard was was more so just consumer sentiment um, saying, is this what my money gets me? Like no window casings? Uh, is that ah, all? So I okay. saw a lot of that. But as far but as... that's just a matter of like personal, inflation made y- yeah. things cost more. And if you want window casing, it costs this much. You're, oh, you don't have right. it? You don't get it. Yeah. Like that's... There's not a whole... That's different. So that's I, not quality. That's right. just you can't afford the options. You're, I'm more yeah. talking like... Did you see poor workmanship? I have it with the builders in our area, whether it's like a smaller or not a smaller, but um, a turnkey builder that may be doing like 400 houses in a neighborhood and everything is like these five plans or a custom builder that's more high end. I have not in North Carolina. I don't worry about the custom yeah, builder yeah. at all. Yeah. They, that world, their world doesn't really change. They're mm-hmm. doing a million dollar house. They're doing one or five a year and- you Those know, they are not really affected by it. Like, yeah, the, the reason that they yeah. charge what they charge for a custom house is specifically because they overbuild and mm-hmm. they don't cut those corners. You're I right. am more yeah. worried about that person who's doing 400 houses yeah. in a neighborhood. You've got five styles or even two styles and you have, you know, just as quickly as these crews can come yeah. in and frame them, yeah. they do. And it's usually little things like um, maybe a vent's not hooked up, but uh, it's there to be hooked up. Um, just little things like that, or maybe something was left off. Because we, I always tell my clients, whether I'm representing them or my buyer agent is representing them and we're buying new construction, I'll say, hey, we're getting a home inspection. And they'll say, well, it's new construction. We don't need a home inspection. You should get a home inspection. And um, we just had something where, um, oh, the uh, – in Garner, the um, the furnace upstairs in the attic was a big dent in it, and we we wouldn't have seen that. And the inspector came up and said, "Hey, there's a big dent, and that needs to be changed out." And it was changed, but had we not caught it, maybe it wouldn't have ever been noticed until she had an issue and she went upstairs and said, "There's a huge dent," and maybe that could have affected the warranty. Who yeah. knows? So. Things like that, but not so much cutting corners. Where I do see the cutting corners were all the flips that were done in the last few years. Okay. That was frightening um, to see just really poor workmanship, um, things not hooked up, a lot of DIY and um, folks that thought, let me make a quick buck with the low rates and the way the triangle's exploding. Let me flip this house. And uh, and I see a lot of corners cut, unfortunately, in yeah. those scenarios. Yeah, we, we would have – well, yeah, we – I didn't see that firsthand except for uh, I went with um, – I went with Jen to look at a potential place to rent Mm -hmm. and the deck was just like the joists were undersized and overspaced and the railing as you walked down it and grabbed the rail, it wobbled like a solid six to eight inches left or right. Yeah. And I like barged back into the kitchen and I was like, stop signing the lease. Yeah. What did you do to this deck? And he was like, the framing's all original. We just put new decking down. And I was like, I was like, One, that's a lie. There's old, there's new. I can see the framing. Yeah. And two, like, it's not even attached to the house. New decking, new rail. That's the part that's the most concerning. It wasn't, like, through the deck and bolted into the frame. It was Mm -hmm. just, like, the 4 by 4 was sitting on the decking with metal angle brackets and screws. It was very janky. Yes. Yeah. And then, then the like, the leasing agent, no, it was the homeowner. Uh, told me that the same person did the front steps and they were flawless. And I was like, this is the same human who did this? Yeah, I don't know about that. Gave you that. I was like, you should be very concerned about... He subbed it out that day. I guess. You know, this guy, you know, is... You know, I don't re- even remember his name, but he was like a Duke professor. This is obviously not what he did for his, like, daily thing. Yeah. But... I got 10 rental homes and 
I have to fix anything and everything when my tenant breaks something. Mm-hmm. And 99% of the time, it's, it's my responsibility. So you best be damned that I overbuild the crap out of those. Oh, yeah. Every single robe hook, towel bar, it's in a stud yes. or it's with a 95-pound weighted drywall anchor. Like, it, we, we don't mess around with this kind of stuff. Like, it, I'm just going to have to fix it later if I cut those corners. But it's different because I buy the home, I got the home, I build the home, I rent out the home. If I was flipping it, there would definitely be more incentive to just put the hook wherever it should go. It will break two years from now when I don't own it anymore. Yes, but yeah. if I want to keep these in working order for 10 years and then sell them, they need to look the same. Yes, and you're exactly right. And unfortunately, there is a lot of, and here's another so- Southern colloquialism, um, colloquialism, uh, uh, lipstick on a pig. Like we see oh, a yeah. lot of that yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time. I mean, Paint you may, it, floor it, you're relist exactly it. exactly right because they don't care because they're not going to live here in two years. I yeah. want my money now. Yeah, see, I'm not ever going to live in any of the houses that I've done. Yeah. But they matter to me because I need them to be beautiful in 10 years. Yes. So we put yeah. granite countertops. We put good stone in the tile in the showers we put industrial floors that won't scrape we just you know think about what it's going to be like to do upkeep and refinishes like oh well if it's all a waterproof floor with no transitions there's nowhere for stuff to get like caught up or whatever you know if if we don't let you in the crawl space you can't go in there to break stuff padlock like we just just do that kind of stuff or you know the, the big one is putting blocking for you know, curtain rods or TVs. Oh, yeah. Um, or their giant fish tank they don't, they don't tell you about. Well, they're not allowed to have fish tanks. Okay, Yeah, good. that's definitely, yeah. no, 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 no. We allow pets, but like dogs. Yeah. 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 Our, our, our homemade lease does say we allow a pig just because one dude wanted a pig. He had this like tiny little like 20 yeah. pound pig. And so there's uh, a pig clause. And we were like sure like he was like i swear it's like in a cute little crate and it's super adorable and blah blah and like it doesn't do anything and we were like okay like okay and then like it didn't work out but we never took it out of the lease and we had one tenant send like a joking text like (laughs) we're getting five pigs we were like what and they were like it says in your lease you allow pigs and we were like you need to put a cap on that yeah yeah yeah. no No more than three we just wrote no and they were like we're kidding we're not we're not we're not doing that we just wanted to mess with you oh that's funny i wouldn't take it out the pig clause this is the pig addendum yeah 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 We don't use that yeah. lease. Now yeah, Weston yeah. Wood all writes our leases. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we uh, don't really find our own tenants. Mm. Um, I wouldn't either. Just let ev- just let them do all the... They do everything. Yeah. And the real reason is the $75 application fee. Because that is the biggest weeder of people who yes. are a time waster. I'm always surprised when people don't want to pay an application fee. Like, what yeah. do you think this is? Yeah, like, like it's that like issue. 75 bucks yeah. really just separates you from wasting our time because, you know, mo- for the most part, if you're a renter, you know your means. Yeah. And you know your credit or approximately within 25 points. You know, I don't know anyone who's like, it's 753, I check it every morning. (laughs) Like, no, this is not your heart rate. But like, for the most part, you know your means. Yeah. And that means that you know what zone you're in. So it's really like, okay, are you willing to commit to a $75 fee because we got to run background checks, credit checks, talk to your previous renter, your yes. previous employer, yeah. your current employer. If you rent from if you rent from me, Dakota Field Properties, I have to meet your pet. And that's not just because I love pets. Like, I actually am going to meet your dog. Yeah. Because if you tell me your dog is like, especially a small dog, big dogs, I don't worry about. Small dogs are vicious. And, and a Isn't lot it? of small dogs will like, during a lightning storm, scratch at a, at a like corner of the house. And then yeah. it's like, if you do that, Every lightning storm for a two-year lease, I got to replace a big chunk of drywall. Yeah, that you make a good point. You're right. Which yeah. is, you know, the the neurotic thing with lightning storms specifically in dogs, it does not care what size. Like, my dog doesn't scratch, luckily, but he needs a thunder shirt. Oh, what yeah. is a thunder shirt? It's is basically it like a just a really tight, like, 
spandex kind of shirt with like velcro straps that make it super super tight and it's like he's being hugged like he's okay so you're swaddling him essentially yeah and he's and it and it doesn't even work he still like drools and pants and like wants to be as close to you as humanly possible he's like protect me poor sweet willie and i'm just like dude i am protecting you i bought the home guess what we have shelter we're good but you he doesn't get it and i just you know yeah there's there's a funny bit. Do you know uh, Nate Bargetsy, the yes. stand-up comedian? Yeah, he's a riot. Yeah, he does this bit where his dog has a problem to the point where they have to give him like sedatives, mm-hmm. and so he like goes and get the dog sedatives, and they're expired. So he has to like go wake up his wife, <laughs> and his wife is like, "They're they're new pills in an old bottle," and he's just like, "Well, I'm the idiot for didn't assuming that, <laughs> right? How and, would I know? Yeah, that? I yeah, forgot yeah. I was a mind reader. I yeah, right. And 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 he's like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah." Plus, they don't. It doesn't even ex- dog medication doesn't even expire. And he's of course, like, in his Nate Bargetsy way of talking he's just like i know all the people she knows we don't know anybody who makes dog medicine how does she know that like she she didn't go to spin class one day and talk to her friend go well we're making great strides in the dog medicine world it just doesn't expire like yeah and then he's like so yeah we didn't talk for three days like (laughs) just like so funny (laughs) um okay so as far as um listeners who are in the Mebane area, yes. or I guess the whole triad, let's say. Yeah. What's the easiest way to find you and get in touch with you oh. for your realty services? You can call me at 919-323-6068, or you can Google Rachel Z. I pop up, uh, or go to our website, rachelzamorski.com, uh, or email rachelz at kw.com. I'm with Keller Williams. Uh, covering the triad and the triangle. Um, but just Google Rachel Z. I have so many people that just Google Rachel Z. It takes you right to my website. Uh, you can fill out a little thing. I don't ask a lot of information. Just, hey, contact me. Here's my phone number. And I will um, I usually, people are always surprised that I uh, respond so quickly. They're like, oh, I didn't think you called me back. I was like, well, why did you call? You uh, know, <laughs> I would be pleasantly surprised, but also at the same uh the flip side of that coin, if you didn't, I'd find another realtor. Oh, yeah, immediately. I'm like, moving on. I have stuff to do. I'm busy. Yeah. I have a, a tight calendar. I've got stuff to do. Let's yeah, let's yeah. go. But I always respond really quickly. And, um, yeah, and you can find me on Facebook also. Yeah, so, like I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't even know. Maybe Stacy was our mutual friend uh, in probably. common. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because I definitely just was not, I wasn't, friends with you but i could see you like you'd be like another closing day another thing in medvin and i was like this person is killing it so like yeah yeah, so i'm so glad we did this yeah um and oh and as always uh the orange hammer podcast is on uh facebook we are on instagram we are on youtube if you need crs contracting in the triangle or want to uh come on the podcast or have me talk about something specific you can email me corb that's c-o-r-b at wsdg.com or you can ring my cell 845-489-6057 and as always thank you for listening rachel thank you so much for coming i really appreciate it i so enjoy your podcast i love listening to you on spotify also spotify shout out is awesome and yeah thanks for having me on as a guest this has been great you're so great to listen to and talk to thank you so much spotify if you're listening give me a sponsorship because i want to keep doing this forever (laughs) (laughs) all right thank you so much for coming thanks so much for listening bye everybody Bye.